Hey everyone, I am so excited to continue to explore Indigenous connections with you. Today we are going to be exploring some Indigenous musical instruments. Hi, I'm Robbie. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm Miss Carly, the teacher. It's time for Home Time with Robbie and Susie. I have hands. I have hands. Watch me clap. Oh, what a miracle am I I have feet I have feet Watch me stand Watch me stand Oh, what a miracle am I Oh, what a miracle Oh, what a miracle Every little part of me so very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have arms, I have arms. Watch me swing, watch me swing. Oh, what a miracle am I. I have legs, I have legs. They can bend and stretch. So very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have a spine, I have a spine, it can twist and bend, it can twist and bend. Oh, what a miracle am I! I have one foot, I have one foot, watch me balance. I have a song that you may know. You sing it at Little Miracles all the time. Can you guess what it is? It has a didgeridoo, wah, 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 and a kangaroo, and a wombat that wobbles. That's right, it's the wombat wobble. And as we are learning about indigenous musical instruments, this one has a didgeridoo, wah, wah, wah. Have you ever heard a didgeridoo before? Well, would you like to join in and stand up and sing this song with me? Okay, are you ready? See if you can remember. On three, one, two, three. You do the didgeridoo, wah, 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 and the wombat wobble, and the kangaroo, and the emu too, and you jump in the air, and you turn around, and you say to mum and dad and all your friends in a big love heart, I love you. Did you like that song? Would you like to sing it again with me? Okay, see if you can remember all the actions. You ready? Get your didgeridoos ready. You do the didgeridoo, wah, 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 and the wombat wobble, and the kangaroo, and the emu too, and you jump in the air, and you turn around, and you say to mum and dad and all your friends in a big love heart, I love you. I love that song. That's one of my favourites. You can keep practising as well. All right, let's go and see what we're going to learn next. Hey everyone, really excited to be here with you today learning all about Indigenous musical instruments. Today we have a story to read with you called Ernie Dances to the Didgeridoo. And if you take a look at the front cover, you can see little Ernie in the middle and he's having a dance while his friend plays this very long instrument here called the didgeridoo. Let's have a look. Ernie 
Ernie is going to live in Arnhem Land for a year. Ernie waves goodbye to Rosie, Frank, Tessa, Nikki, Clive and Celeste and promises to write them a letter for each of the six Arnhem Land seasons. He flies above the desert for hours and lands in Darwin. It's hot. He travels over the flood plains and crosses the East Alligator River and arrives at his new home. Dear Clive, it's Kajuk now, the monsoon season. It rains every day, but I am having a good time. Sammy surfs in the puddles, Christine slides in the mud, Ernie catches frogs, Joseph plays football, Patrick spears a barramundi, and Jenna rides her bike in the rain. But Christine and her baby brother watch a goanna floating on the floodwaters. He's found a little stick to perch himself on there. Dear Frank, it's Bankarang, harvest time. It has stopped raining and the sun shines every day. Christine plays Tintin. Sammy jumps into the waterfall. Ernie sneaks up on the buffalo. Patrick collects goose eggs. Joseph does backflips off the coconut tree. And Tammy gets chased by a crocodile. <sighs> That's a bit crazy. But Jenna goes for a walk and her grandfather's pig does too. Dear Nikki, it's UK now. Cool weather time. The water lilies are flowering and they smell beautiful. Patrick gets painted with the crocodile dreaming. Joseph and his uncle collect bark for painting. Christine digs for yams. Ernie learns to make a spear. Jenna dances at the disco and Tammy goes for a sugar bag. She looks like she's doing some harvesting. But Sammy is frightened by the Mimi still dances. It does look a bit scary, doesn't it? Dear Celeste, it's work hang, the early dry season. The grass is yellow and there are lots of mosquitoes. Tammy catches a file snake. Ernie goes fishing. Joseph takes his sister for a walk. Jenna's mother teaches her to weave pendanus. Sammy plays the tin trucks and Christine learns the yam dance. But Patrick's grandfather tells him about the creation mother. See some beautiful cave paintings there. Dear Rosie, the Kurung is here, the hot dry season. There is hardly any water in the billabong. Jenna catches a crab at the beach. Patrick and his little sisters eat icy poles. Ernie collects green plums with old Daisy. Tammy digs up a long necked turtle. Christine has her ears inspected. And Sammy's uncle tells, her, tells him a dreamtime story about the moon. Do you guys know what a dreamtime story is? I'm sure you've read one at home. But Joseph surprises a thirsty horse under his house. Oh, he looks a bit scared. Dear Tessa, it's Colonel Malang, the pre-monsoon season. It's very humid and there are thunderstorms every day. Patrick is a horse in the school play. Tammy is a butterfly. Sammy is a frog. Ernie is a frilled neck lizard. Jenna is a corella and Joseph is King the Crocodile. But Christine rings the bell on Santa's truck. She's got the lucky job, doesn't she? Dear Ernie, thank you for all your letters. We are doing a special Arnhem Land activities at school. Celeste is a stilt dancer. Clive wears body paint. Tessa, Tessa teaches us some Kuwintu words. Nikki does a bark painting of her guinea pig. Rosie makes damper. And Frank is a hunter and his dog Roger is a dingo. But we wonder what you're doing, Ernie. What a fun story, learning all about special Arnhem Land and their different seasons. I really enjoyed that and I hope you guys did too. What a lovely story. I'm really excited to see what we learn about next while we explore Indigenous musical instruments. Another musical instrument that is very 
well known now, but is used all over Australia now by the Indigenous people. It originally comes from the top end of Australia, and one of the words they use is kadaki, kadaki, and um, there's another word which is a language that I, not from my language, but another language from up top. The word didgeridoo is not the real Aboriginal word. It was a given word by the European people, non-Aboriginal people. And if I like, play a little tune and then you can pick up, and this is what the people heard when they first heard the sound of the didgeridoo, and they gave it that name. It sounds like, and they'll play it. And the people heard that and they said, they said, that sounds like didgeridoo, didgeridoo, and they gave it a name, didgeridoo. And that's where the word came from today, the didgeridoo. But um, <clears throat> people that learn to play it, like myself and other musicians, um, played for the people when they danced, when they used the tap sticks, when they tapped the sticks together and they stomped their feet, they wanted another sound. And somebody one day must have cut a tree that was hollow, hollow right through, like that. And if you look at that, you can see it's hollow. And he must have put his mouth to it and went like that. So you gotta, you got to vibrate your lips to play the didgeridoo. So when I put my lips to that and I do that, it goes like this. And it makes that sound. So when he heard that, he went... Whoa! And he made a sound, which now people are using for dance and play the sound. Now also the, the musician people learnt how to put their voices into it. So when he put his voice into it, like a kookaburra, when you listen to a kookaburra he goes Now you watch when I play the ditch and do that to inside you listen to the sound of the kookaburra. Kukundi, we call him. So, you can make the sound of the kookaburra through that. Another bird it's a night bird. It's got big eyes. We call it the owl. Now, the mopo cow. When you hear it at night going, mopo, mopo, he's hunting. He's looking for mice and insects that are crawling around. So when you hear that mopo, that's a mopo cow. So you listen when I play the digit and do that sound. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> another animal, this is an animal now, it's a dog, a type of dog. It's one of our Australian, first Australian dogs. We call him the dingo. And when the big moon, see the big moon in the sky, real big round moon? When that comes up over the mountains or up over the, from the sea, the dingo, he loves to do this. It goes, woo, 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 and he howls to the moon, calling the moon up into the sky. Well, you listen to it as on a didgeridoo.
start hopping and you listen I'll make the hopping sound of the kangaroo <laughs> some sounds for you and I'm going to put it all together so Uncle Russ now is going to play the didge and I hope you enjoy. Beautiful sounds created all through this um, olive piece of tent wood and um, the termites. You know that little book about Tommy the termite? Well, he done that. The termite, they heat the bottom, they heat through the middle of the wood and make the timber hollow. And uh, the Aboriginal people now use it as a, a wonderful musical instrument. Hey everyone, 
Shannon, that was such a great story with Ernie Dance as a didgeridoo. I loved how he explored and experienced all those amazing things up in Arnhem Land. He did, didn't he? All the different seasons. It was a good story. It was yeah. a great story. That's good. Well, I thought because Ernie dances to the didgeridoo and we've been learning about musical instruments today, I thought we could make our very own tapping sticks and rain sticks, which are Indigenous musical instruments. I'd love to. Okay, so I'm going to be creating some tapping sticks. So if you didn't know what tapping sticks are, these are some here. These are from Uncle Russ's art gallery and they're made from very hard wood and you can see they're beautifully decorated and they make a sound. A nice beat. It <laughs> is. And Aborigines use these to help keep rhythm in their songs when they're singing or when they're chanting. And I have some blank tapping sticks here that I'm going to do some beautiful artwork on with some cotton tips and some black, orange and yellow paint. But I thought, I can see here you've got some gum nuts and you've got a tube here. Are you going to be making a rain stick? You guessed right, I sure am. I'm going to be creating a rain stick and adding some um, indigenous print on there. And um, yeah, the Aboriginals use the rain sticks to try and encourage rain in dry areas. So we'll be creating our own today. Oh, that's exciting because it must be so dry out there. Very dry. Out from Gundabooka where my family lives is very dry dirt. So oh. maybe this can bring on some rain. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Okay, well, um, how are you going to get started on your rain stick? Um, I think I might start off with closing the end. Okay. So I can pour my gum nuts in. Oh, and you're using gum nuts too, so you're using natural items. Yes. So you can do this at home as well. You can, this is just a tube, looks like a tube, and just some gum nuts. Yeah, and we found these outside oh, in you the found, garden. Oh, yeah. nice. So you can maybe find some gum nuts in your garden too and create your very own rain stick. Okay, so yes. you've got some plastic as well. I'm just going to cover up the holes so the gum nuts don't fall out. Okay, well I'm going to get started on my tapping sticks. So I have some cotton tips and as you can see here, there is beautiful artwork that is all in dots. It looks like it's a circle as well. I think I'm going to try and create some rings all the way around my tapping sticks. So I'm probably going to try some yellow, so dip, dip, dip. Just like that, you don't need too much. And then I'm going to put some like that and dots around my tapping stick, just like that. So I'll go around and around and around. Some beautiful warm colours you're using there. Yeah, and some beautiful natural colours too. So yellow and orange and black can all be found. And the Indigenous people, traditional landowners, when they did their artwork, they used things like crushed up rock and clay and all the natural items that they find outside on the land that they live on. It's orange like the orange dirt. That's right. So I've created one ring all the way around and I might get another one to do a different colour. I might try some orange. It's nice and bright. I'm going to make mine nice and sturdy. Put some string around the top. Dot, 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 dot. dot. Can't wait to hear what this sounds like when we're finished. Oh, because it's a rain stick. Do you think it's going to sound like rain falling? I definitely think it will. <laughs> we'll put some beautiful colours on it once we're finished. Do you need some help? Um, I think I got it. Thank you, though. It's okay. There we go. Dot, 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 dot. I don't think I can cover all my tapping stick with dots because when I clap them together it's going to ruin your paint. That's yeah. right and it needs time to dry. But already my plain sticks are starting to be very very decorative. Alright so I've closed up one side of my rain stick. Ooh very clever. Now I'm going to add my gum nuts in. You can hear them already. Oh, I like the sound already. Put some more Sounds in. like trinkling rain. Yeah, that should be plenty. I'm going to close up the other end again. Some tape on there. Tape on the other side. 
I love that you're using recycled items as well. Yeah, some old paper towel roll, I believe so. Some old plastic to close up our rain stick. I'm gonna try some black. I wonder how that's gonna look on the dark wood. Oh, you can see it, look at that. Dot, 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 dot. Look how colourful that is. It's looking beautiful. Wow. All right, I'm going to try doing the other one now. I'm going to need to rest this one up here because it's still wet. Very well gentle. <laughs> Whoop, almost rolled away. I might actually lay it this way. Good idea. That's perfect. Lean it up through here. Almost there finished. There we go. Closing up the other end of my rain stick. Wow, it's looking so good. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear what it sounds like. I know. I might try a different pattern this way. I might go up this time instead of around. So you can create, you can use dots or you can put stripes. You can create a tapping stick in any way that you'd like so that you can be creative. You can create your own music with them. You can. I remember dancing to tapping sticks and I loved hearing the beat and rhythm of the tapping stick and it really helped me to move my body in a way that follows that beat and rhythm. It's very loud and clear when they tap, isn't it? It is, it is. All right, now that I've got my own stick all sealed up, I think I might get to decorating. Do some dots as well. Have you um, have you heard people from your tribe playing any instruments? Some of them, yes. Um, we really love the guitar, to be honest. Oh yeah. wow! But sometimes when we sit around the campfire, tell our stories, we'll play um, our clapping sticks together. So we all have our own pair. Usually when we go there, yeah. Yeah. Go to Gundabuka. I'm out in the outback. That's awesome. How long does it take to get there from here? I think it's about a five hour drive maybe. Oh wow. Big drive, very big drive. And it's very different to here? Yes. We're yes. near the beach. Yes. Yes, there's no water out there, just all red dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you're being very careful with the dots. I, I love dot painting. It's definitely um, something I enjoy. It is. It's very, it's very therapeutic and very um, calming. And you can try it at home as well. And you can try using cotton tips, or I have even used sticks before. So I oh, get a small yeah. stick and I dip the end of the stick in, and then I can do dot painting using sticks. How amazing is that? Use all sorts of things. A little bit more, a few dots there. So I've got some going up and down and then some going around just like that. Looking beautiful. And I noticed with tapping sticks, if you tap closer to your hand, it's a sharper sound or it's a duller sound like this. Oh, but if yes. I tap up here, but louder, isn't it's it? a louder sound. Yeah. So I think the tighter I hold the tapping sticks, definitely changes the sound. It changes the sound, and then the looser I hold them, the louder it sounds. I love the sound of them. They're so clear. Thank you. And they're very, made from very, very hard wood, but you can even find your own tapping sticks outside. We found some branches here that you can create some tapping sticks with, just like that. Maybe we could put our own. They are. They're going to make a very different sound because these ones <laughs> are just from a tree in the garden, but they're going to be a bit lighter. Just like that. Yeah, you can create your own just at home. You can. Here we go. I think I'm almost finished with my print. Wow, I really love your artwork. What have you made? Um, I've just made a nice little circle in here with my yellow and orange and then I've done some black pathways coming off the end. Oh it's wow. It's a little bit like a sun. It does, it Isn't does. It? Are you ready to try it out? Yeah, you ready? Okay. Alright. Oh, wow, it sounds like twinkling rain. Very nice. It is. I think it might, it might rain now if we're Maybe. playing this. This might bring it on, I think. <laughs> 
Oh, Ooh. that's amazing. I might play my tapping sticks. Oh, yeah. Should we play them together? Yep. I love it. Very nice. I love, awesome. how, I love how different they are. Me too. They're very different musical instruments. And our different painting styles. I really like They you are. You lines and I sort of went with stuff. They are. My paint didn't dry, but it still, it still looks good. I'm very it's proud of it. Well, we can't wait to see how you can create some of your very own musical instruments at home. And we look forward to seeing them and your own amazing creativeness. Well, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.